All right, another beautiful week of hopper bottoming. Look at all this mess we got to walk in right here. That is soybean meal. And let me tell you, when it dries up, that's going to be some stinking stuff right here. We got to walk right up through the middle of it. So, more reasons not to be a hopper bottom driver. How about that? Well, <clears throat> this is uh, one of my local places to eat right here. And we're just not going to get to eat there or not get to go home, so we're going to stop by here. I live, you know, 20 minutes from here. But it just uh, wasn't in the cards to go home tonight because, oh, ball games and different stuff is... Uh, and plus, I wasn't going to get to stay there long anyway. So it wasn't really. I was going to have to go about 20, 20, 30 miles out of the way to go home. And I wasn't going to get to stay with a couple hours anyway. So might as well come and eat some good food. So I uh, usually get brisket here. But I got a steak. Um, I hadn't had a, I ate a steak Friday night. It really wasn't that good because I bought some T-bones and the cut wasn't really that good. And I just, bang, long story short. I didn't get a good steak like I normally do when I cook one at home, so I got one tonight. Uh, I would have really wanted brisket, but I'm just like, man, I really want a steak. So oh, We are fixing to get in the road and go down to South Mississippi once again, just like we did last week, uh, and go to this little old bitty uh, co-op feed mill thingamajigger and uh, see about we're probably really gonna wallow around in some stinking mud this time so stay tuned we're gonna ride down uh, ride down through the Delta here and uh, I'm gonna turn on some tunes and uh, just chill out it's a rainy dreary foggy night tonight so and I'm just gonna cruise and take it easy because uh, There's just no need to get in a hurry, number one. But number two, you know, it's it's just a nasty night tonight, and I don't feel like doing this today. And uh, it just is what it is. I don't feel like doing it, and I'm just going to take her easy. So, all right, catch up with you guys later on in the morning. Sometime we'll catch up there. I can't express to y'all how bad that smells right there. That smells like somebody died in a puddle of doo-doo. All right, we're backing up in this bin for the third time. And every time we back up in here, we're just stomping this mud hole worse than it already is. I actually got stuck in it a while ago trying to get trying to get backed up in here. And the worst part about it is, is The further we go in this stall, the more product we're putting in this stall. Yeah, no. All right, shut up. The more product we're putting in the stall, the more less room that we have going out with it, uh, going out because we're having to dump and pull out. So they're taking a loader and pushing that in, and as they're pushing it in, of course they're stacking it, but it's still further out. So we're losing room every time that we come out, you know, it's shorter and shorter. So it's going to end up taking more and more time to unload this and more and more uh, trips through this mud hole. So I am not happy about it, but it is what it is. We're going to just do it. I wish this dude would come over here and open this door. Tell me how far I can get up in here. So, but I'm trying to keep my wind up because like I said, that that mud out there for my for I guess from all this feed and everything and it rains it runs off down here and then it but this is kind of in a draw where I'm at so it's actually just making a big mud hole right here and uh, I don't know maybe I won't get stuck all right maybe I won't get stuck he's opening this door and I think it's pretty close. Yeah, he's turning the vibrator on now, so. It's pretty close to where. Yeah, he just closed that door, so we're good. Yeah, 
he's fixing to open the front door which when you start opening the front door in this deal it even shortens the uh, the distance we can pull forward with the doors open before he has to close them before we drag all that crap out through this big old mud hole He's having to turn the front. Oh, he had to turn the front vibrator on. All right, he's telling us to get going. Let's see here. We ain't going to make it far before we have to stop. The good news is, you know, with trying to get our axle weights right on the... Uh, on each axle, we don't put near as much in the front as we do the back. So hopefully we can get this done in a couple tries. That's good, dude. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Let's see if I can make it through this mud hole here. Oh. We did a little bit of spinning, not bad, not as bad as we did that last time. But the uh, loader man come through there a while ago, and instead of staying on the concrete there, he was uh, getting off in that mud hole before he get to pushing that that stuff in the uh, in the in that bin there. So like he was just like making the mud hole even worse. So people probably just don't think about stuff like that, but. When you gotta back your equipment off in something like that, I think about it. That's the difference in owning something and not owning something. All right, that's what it was right there. Just a big old mess. We got her off now. I guess we can go uh, get the heck out of here. Yep, that mess is on my truck. You get within 20 feet of my truck and you can smell that garbage on that. It smells just like, just like that place. I mean, like, down to the T, so. All right, so here is our current situation here. We're going to load, but a lot of these loads that we pick up, we've got to go to a truck wash or a truck wash out place and get the trailer washed out for no apparent reason because they uh as if running down the road with the hopper or with the hopper doors open and the tarp rolled over wouldn't clean it out enough they want it actually washed out so you got to come to a truck wash here and pay 50 60 70 dollars to have them take a water hose and rinse nothing out of your trailer just so you can get a uh, receipt saying you got a washout. So uh, there's certain loads that, yeah, I can see a washout, but uh, I, I can't see the things, uh, most of the things I haul that uh, that would uh, justify having to have a washout to go load this. So as if, uh, if you didn't know, uh, our government and uh, dog food, horse food, cow food, all these places are more worried about uh, containment and animal food than they ever are about human food because I've hauled a lot of human food uh, in my reefer and uh, even even hauling rice to make beer and hopper bottles. And I guarantee you, you will have more problems picking up at at a dog food, horse food, uh, or ingredient going to a dog food or horse food or a uh, or a cow feed place. But like chickens, they ain't worried about it. Uh, very rarely do they ever worry about the chickens. But if it's going into some kind of pet food, no sir, no sir. They are real, real, real strict about that. So. Uh, I had soybean meal on, so I mean, it's just ground up soybean, basically. And, uh, you know, you run down the road, uh, I've been 
90 miles now. So 90 miles, tarp rolled over, doors open, just blowing all that crap out. I mean, literally probably have nothing in the trailer. They're going to wash nothing out of here. So uh, that's one of the things that you just have to live with when you do this is trailer washouts and it's a pain because uh, I need to be loading getting gone. I left out late this week. I had to do some work on uh, truck and trailer and normally I leave on Mondays and, Bye, Bye, and I actually left on Tuesday so uh, it's going to put me a day behind which would make me late late Friday night Saturday morning getting home but uh, having to do this uh, it's only taking longer because like there's two trucks right now there's two bays here and i thought one of them was supposed to be for washout only and the other for uh for washing but apparently we're washing trucks in two different bays here and uh we're having to wait on two trucks getting the truck wash instead of like the two guys that's in front of me they're getting looks like they're just getting washouts so uh, they got their tarps rolled over on their trailer and that's what it's what it looks like so i hope that's what it is but uh these people that uh that you go pick these places up they don't understand how long this can take the process you know i'm probably going to be here another hour and a half it puts me an hour and a half behind and you know i'm already behind so it's it's kind of aggravating frustrating but it's part of the job so that's what we're going to do so we're just going to sit back and wait our turn pay our 50 bucks and then have to haul ass over there and get loaded see you over there how's your peter bill how is my peter bill that is a question that i am not really wanting to answer somebody asking me like that it's none of your business welcome to silvers here in rain louisiana frog city is what this place is called and uh, we're just sitting here getting some uh getting some stuff done uh checking out uh all the weirdos coming in and out of here so uh i was just i pulled in here to get fuel and take a shower real quick and grab a little snack before i hit the road but i wanted to uh I had to sharpen my pencil on this load right here because uh, as every other hopper load goes, uh, you're always like trying to figure out your axle weight. So I was over here trying to figure out my axle weight. I was empty of fuel and uh, I just, I, I had to figure it out. So basically uh, I went to, uh, I went to load a while ago and after i loaded we uh i loaded by my gauge and i thought that i didn't put enough on the front and i was i was correct so i went and weighed out i scaled out i was like thirty-two thousand something on my drives and 34 something on my on my uh on my trailer back there and of course you know like eleven thousand something on on my steers so uh you know you're always you know that's the deal i mean you can't you can't always axle it because you can't scale it because you can't get enough on your steers up there. So, uh, that's just the way it is. You know, it just, the hoppers are kind of hard. You know, the tandems don't slide in the back. I mean, it's just kind of, it's kind of hard to get, get everything right. Uh, but anyway, I ended up going back and putting another 1200 pounds on and that equated to, uh, you know, another, it wasn't much another hundred and something dollars would have added to the load but uh i wanted i always try and carry at least fifty thousand pounds so i carried fifty thousand one fifty or one forty one sixty something like that oh uh, so i got enough on there but uh i was empty of fuel so i had to be real careful about coming how much fuel i got so um uh, as y'all probably know i i kind of plan my my trip out as to uh where i can get the best fuel discounts at so what i'm doing here is uh i'll show you real quick here is my final one right here okay i was 11,100 on the drives and uh or on the steer and then 3350 on the tandem on the truck and the tandem of the trailer was 34,180. so 
I'm actually a tad bit over on the trailer, but uh, it is what it is there. We just have to live with it. Uh, so that was my final uh, final gross weight. So that gave me right at a thousand pounds to play with right here. So what I did is uh, I figured out about how much a thousand pounds of fuel weight and uh, I come to where I got my best discount at and I figured out to where my next best discount at which is actually in Kentucky and uh, I put enough fuel in there to get to Kentucky and just a little bit more just just in case something happens uh, you know it's I'm not you know you could get caught up in a wreck or weather or whatever and be sitting there like it'd be cold outside and you need to idle and you could run out of fuel right there. So I don't like to push it that close. You know, I put another, oh, I think uh, another 40 gallons over what, uh, over what the, uh, what I originally thought I could act, uh, what I could scale on, on my drive. So uh, probably a little bit over on my drives. All the scales are closed tonight. I'll burn enough of that off. Uh, what scales that I don't, uh, don't go through uh, we'll do something else there so uh, but yeah yeah that's what I did uh, and when I get to Kentucky I will probably top the tank off because I need to go to Ohio back down to Blyville Arkansas and get fuel you know late Friday night uh, so I need to get enough fuel to make it down there so I'll probably top off and uh, that'll put me pretty close on, on weight there's no scales uh, I won't be crossing any scales the rest of the way up through there because uh, there's none and uh, well there's one and it'll be closed time I get through there so it, it'll be good there I will uh, you know we'll be maxed out weight wise maxed out axle wise a little bit over uh, of course but uh, nothing horrible but anyway you know uh, it's only a crime if you get caught right so but yeah, it's just things you got to do to uh, to try to make as much money you can with bulk. And you know, of course, you know everybody says you can get a lighter truck. And you know, you can do that. Man, fuck that. Uh, oh, well, excuse my French, but you know, I mean, like I'm driving what I want to drive. Uh, my stuff's paid for. You know, I'm not. I'm trying to do the best I can with what I got. Is what I'm trying to tell you. So. Uh, yeah, I could get a lighter truck, a more fuel efficient truck, but you know, I don't want a payment. I don't want uh, the aggravation of aerodynamics because if you've ever worked on an aerodynamic truck, you know, everything is crammed up in there. It's not fun. So, uh, you know, the combination of that and, uh, you know, the fact that you probably had to have a payment, you know, the emissions, I could go on and on. Uh, E-log, I mean, yeah, yeah, ELD. I mean, like, there's all kind of things why I don't like that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, what I'm saying is, you know, I'm doing the best I can with what I got, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. So, you know, I've kind of had to push the envelope sometimes to make it all work, but we're making it work, and we're going to keep making it work because that's what we do. We, uh, we don't back down, and we just keep doing it and then uh, do it right. And if it pisses some people off just because I bend a rule or two, sorry. We got to go. I got to go. It's getting late. It's uh, it's a long ride. I didn't get loaded till late. And the time I got fueled and showered, we still got a long, long way to go. So uh, enjoy the ride. We're going to ride on across I-10, I-12, and 59 to 2059 up to Birmingham, 65 to Louisville 71 to 75 through Cincinnati and 71 on up there where we're going up there so we're going up there close to Cleveland so we got a long long way to go from going from the Gulf Coast to whatever that lake is up by Cleveland Superior it ain't Michigan I don't Ontario hell I don't know anyway I gotta go all right peace